well as our key integrations. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Um, we are recording this session, so we will make this available after the event today. Please feel free to share with any colleagues or anyone else. Um, we do want the session to be interactive, so we do have a Q&A. Please submit any questions you may have in the questions panel uh, and the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, finally, we do have a quick survey um, after the session today, so please fill this out. Uh, your feedback is really valuable to us. Um, and now on to our speakers. So I think you're very familiar with him by now, but we do have Dovik joining us today. Hi, Dovik. Good morning and good afternoon to our New Zealanders. Great. We're also joined today by Deepak. Welcome, Deepak. Hi, everyone. I'm Deepak here. Perfect. And with that, I will hand it over to Dovik to kick things off. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Deepak, for, for a quick uh, saying hello. And uh, what I wanted to do today is uh, just give you a little bit of uh, focus around a few um, few items that are probably uh, very topical at the moment. Uh, so today we're going to uh, to be focusing around uh, the GoToConnect promotions. Now it's end of financial year. We all want to, to get all our revenues in. Um, so we do have some some nice promotions that, uh, that are ending at the end of this uh, this quarter. So we're just doing a bit of a reminder to everyone that we have those in place and, uh, and I'll cover those fairly quickly. Um, however, today we're going to really focus around demos. We're going to do a bit of a demo in terms of um, uh, some of the capabilities in our, in our platform. Um, so we'll do uh, some uh, plays of uh, Salesforce. I should clarify, this is actually Zoho uh, as, as one of the other the demos. Uh, we're going to, to provide you maybe with a video of Zendesk. Um, and also we're going to do a, a Chrome extension. Uh, and we're going to, uh, to focus around HubSpot and uh, I'll cover that off and uh, we'll give you a bit of a view of what that looks like. Uh, I then also wanted to touch uh, on a few extras. So we do have some uh, some APIs that are available. So customers that have some capabilities of doing their own uh, integration work or even partners that, uh, that do have those skill set available to them. We do have a suite of APIs that are available for GoToConnect, uh, meetings, webinar, uh, training that we can, we can utilize. So, uh, so we'll talk about those. And lastly, we'll also talk about the options in terms of how you can integrate into systems directly out of the dial plan. So, uh, so plenty to talk about and uh, lots of activity on today. So, uh, Deepak, and you, uh, can you come on, please? Thanks, Dobek, uh, for the introduction and uh, also sharing the great promotions we have. So, what Pleasure. I want to do today is uh, to do uh, a bit of demo of how we integrate with uh, Zoho CRM and also show how we integrate with uh, Salesforce. So what I'll do is I'll share my screen now and bring up my uh, Zoho CRM. Yep, so it's a web-based CRM and what I'll do is I'll bring up my soft phone as well. So we are utilizing PhoneBridge with Zoho offers on their CRM and integrate our uh, phone on Zoho. So as you can see here, there is a small icon of phone where you can actually do a dial by a traditional dial pad, or you can um, select any of the users from um, the context and make a click to call. So what I'll do is first I'll show you an incoming call and then I'll demonstrate how we do click to call function as well. Now to do that, what I'll do is from one of my uh, extensions sitting next to me, I'm gonna make a call to the user. So as you see the incoming call comes on my phone and I accept that call. And once I accept that call, you will see there was a pop-up here and the pop-up got updated that I've been connected to phone. This is purely on Zoho CRM. And I have option to make comments about the call, uh, the conversation which I'm having. And once the call is completed, this calls get logged on uh, to uh, the contact. As you can see, I have actually entered uh, this extension as one of the contacts. So it picked up the right exchange, uh, right contact from the Zoho CRM and also will attach the call to the same context. So let me go into the accounts and try to see whether this call is being logged on. Yeah. So if you see here, uh, all 
as as this particular account is having uh, one of the contact as this extension this agent one it's being this call has been tagged to this particular account so uh, this makes uh, quite easy when you have a lot many customer whom you have already uh, made a contact in your uh, CRM and when they give you a call the call is associated with that contact and the call is automatically logged into the CRM as well now let me show you how I can actually make calls uh, right from the CRM itself so if you see here there are two um, contact and I can see a button appearing next to the call and if once I make a call it will automatically push a CTI call to this uh, to my soft phone okay and once I accept that it will actually do a dial out I'll accept that call on my mobile so once the call once the call is established it will automatically capture that it is established and it will auto update a timer it picked up the right extension it allows me to put the description which again once i put the description it will log this call okay uh, yep. So that's what uh, the integration offers. Um, it uses the phone bridge function available on uh, Zoho CRM. You need to have that function on Zoho CRM and on GoToConnect side, a simple integration, which is again documented very well on our website, easy to install uh, with few simple steps. Now with this, I would like to show you uh, the salesforce integration we do a little bit different in salesforce now with new uh, integration we have come up with uh, inbuilt soft phone so once you have uh, done the integration you get an option either to use a inbuilt soft phone so like in zoho crm i had to actually bring up my soft phone as a separate application with uh, Salesforce integration I do not have to do that I have a choice whether to do a click to call as I did in my Zoho CRM um, integration or I can use built-in soft phone as well on the Salesforce okay so here for this demonstration I have chosen built-in soft phone again it's all selectable uh, it's not restricted the user can actually make those changes by themselves now to do the demonstration what I'll do is I'll make a call again from agent one and those are actually recorded as a few uh, one of the contact in my um, Salesforce CRM so I'll make a call here. Yep so once the call uh, pops in it will actually bring up this uh, the widgets and from which I can actually answer the call and it will automatically pop up the contact in my uh, Salesforce again this is all configurable it doesn't have it it's not an intrusive so you can actually decide what you want to uh, pop up whether you want to pop up the contact or no and it will bring up this okay now uh, once I actually answer the call it brought up uh, the contact and once the call ends I can have this automatically uh, updated to log this call activity okay which allows me also to have a disposition code uh, and so on okay so once I save this uh, or log this call okay it will automatically update in the contact okay with all the details yeah, it will show all the description if I have written input any description if I have associated this with any leads or anything it will all appear on uh, the Salesforce okay similarly uh, I have click to call function here in Salesforce as well as you can see here uh, the contact appeared on the screen has one of uh, the number registered for this as a phone number I, if I click on it my uh, system automatically dials out that extension again uh, from the go to connect widget which is there on the salesforce and i can establish that call once the call is answered again everything remains same 
at the end of the call, it will allow me to uh, show uh, log this call. Yes, once I log this call, it will automatically get updated in uh, the contact history, the timeline. If I see, it will show you that it was an inbound or an outbound call. And if any notes were taken, it will reflect the same as well. Yep, with this, I would like to again hand it back to Dobek. Thanks very much, Tipak. Much appreciated for the for the demo. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to uh, to share uh, my screen again, um, and I'll basically cover off um, our ability to uh, utilize the Chrome extension, and I'm going to use HubSpot as a mechanism to demonstrate that for you today. So uh, so let me just uh, move away from from that and uh, and introduce you firstly to uh, to the uh, to the extension. So. In a, in a Chrome extension, what you have is an ability to, to click on this icon over here and allows you to search for, uh, for, for um, extensions to Chrome. So one of those things you can obviously do is search for GoTo, and there you go, I've got GoTo, I can install that, I've already got it installed in, uh, in my scenario. So once I have it deployed as, as one of my extensions, it actually appears in, uh, in, a, in a Chrome window um, in here. So, uh, so I've got this uh, this icon that's uh, that's uh, got a G for go to, and um, and that now monitors all my um, uh, all my systems, all my pages that uh, that are coming in, and uh, and it also monitors the state of the call uh, when a call comes in. So, if I, for example, um, route to that. Um, and I'll dial that extension uh, that, uh, that I have, what you'll find is that um, I'll get a screen pop uh, that I've got an incoming call, but I also have got a screen pop that's appeared over here on, and I've actually popped HubSpot. So in this instance, it took the number that, uh, that I presented and it matched it with, uh, with the number that is associated with Jake Breacher, and it brought up that contact. Okay, so how did that happen? How did this uh, this thing actually make it uh, uh, work in that scenario? Well, the Chrome extension has um, uh, this option to uh, to basically to to give you uh, you know a, a cogwheel over here that gives you some extension options. In those extension options, you get to select the account that you're going to be utilizing. So in my scenario, I actually used extension 1009 which is an extension on Deepak's demo PBX, but I could actually have selected just to utilize the GoToMobile. So if I wanted to, uh, to associate a screen pop and only receive the call on my mobile telephone, I could do that. If I similarly wanted to run it uh, just purely with a desktop application, or if I wanted to run with a handset, then those devices, as you can see, I've got a handset associated with another extension, then those devices are registered and I can select individual devices or all devices. Now, the reason why we actually have individual devices is because it can be annoying if you select all devices and suddenly you've got three devices that ring at the same time. So you can be quite selective in terms of what you're going to, to utilize in that scenario. So that's the first thing. Uh, once you've selected the extension, um, then you're ready to go. You can do a quick test to establish that. Then we have some extension settings that enable you to do the smarts. So what we're doing over here is we're basically doing a bit of a call, um, a lookup to see uh, if we need to, to pop a particular website. So by default, um, you, can, uh, you can select to have the caller ID search when the caller is ringing. There is an option to actually do it after the call has been answered. So if you want to do the screen pop after the, you've answered the call rather than uh, during the ring section, you can do that. Now, what we do is we include three different um, um, pre-built uh, search sites already. So I can have a LinkedIn search and basically it just looks into LinkedIn and looks at the caller ID and finds it contact for me. It also gives you an ability to, uh, to use custom templates. And that's what I did to, uh, to use um, for the integration in HubSpot. So when I look at that, uh, if I actually click uh, edit, I can see that I've given it a name HubSpot and I've given um, this, uh, this text, um, which is, you know, uh, gobbledygook to, uh, to most people. But it's pretty easy to actually to calculate. So one of the things that you'll have in HubSpot is you'll have a search button. So when I do a search in, um, in HubSpot, the moment I start typing in different numbers, 0413, for example, it actually 
provides me with that information over here. So this is essentially what I need to do. I need to say, okay, I am going to copy this text and I'm going to, um, to put it into my extension um, up to this point, uh, into, into here. And then at the end where I've got the, so I might as well just do that and show you how it's done, uh, control V. And then at the end, what you do is you specify whether you're looking to, to use uh, one of those codes. So the query and is equal to uh, one of those codes. So is it color ID? Is it uh, you know uh, uh, a full extension uh, based format? So uh, you, you know you're centric with, uh, with with no dashes versus dashes, or you could use the uh, the E164 format to uh, to look for those uh, for those calls. So the good thing about that is I um, I basically selected the first one um, and it works straight away. So uh, so I was quite happy with uh, with that. Um, so as you can see, I've got this uh, configuration and it's done pretty quickly. Um, now, I've looked at the, uh, the, the text over here. So, uh, so this is on my contacts page. Uh, this is a search on my contacts page. I could have done a search globally. So, uh, so um, I have a global search. And if I now wanted to, uh, to look at all my different contacts uh, or maybe my tasks, or maybe you know, all the things that are available through this filter, you know, contacts, tickets, deals, tasks, et cetera, then I can actually uh, do a global search. And now if I type in um, uh, 0413, it basically gives me a different uh, parameter for for the search to uh, to to look. It gives me a global view for uh, for all that. So it has views all, and it basically will look at all the different parameters. I chose to search based on uh, on contacts to give me that uh, capability uh, through um, uh, through that integration. So nice and easy to uh, to get that screen pop, get the contact up, and uh, and you've got the uh, the the connectivity available. Now, second thing, I've got uh, a list of contacts uh, here that I've created. This is sort of like my uh, my dummy HubSpot website. And in those contacts, I've got different uh, different contacts. What I can do is I can hover over one of those, uh, those contacts and I can, uh, it recognizes that number straight away. So I can basically go out there and click for that uh, for the call to be made. And you can see that I'm initiating the call. And now that call is going to go to, uh, to my uh, mobile telephone, et cetera, and it's going to, to get that. So I'm basically making that call directly to um, uh, to the destination of uh, of that caller through this. Now the cool thing about that is it doesn't have to be just those numbers over here. It actually works for anything in a browser environment. So if I go and uh, do a search for Bankwest and they have a number that's uh, that's presented um, in here, it always happens sort of like jumps to to the bottom. Um, it actually identifies it. So it identifies that I've got a 131719 and I can click to, to call that uh, uh, the number through my application. So an, I, nice and easy. The benefit of that is it's not just for, uh, for uh, my dialing within contacts and dialing if whatever uh, that I find in, uh, in HubSpot. It actually works on just about every uh, instance of the application. The second thing that I really wanted to do is uh, to take a moment um, and change text a little bit. So one of the things that we do have is an ability within HubSpot to integrate with GoToWebinar. So when I go into uh, into the um, uh, the marketplace within uh, HubSpot and I go to uh, to App Marketplace and I search for Goto, you will find that I've got GoToWebinar uh, included in that. Now in here. I've got a lot of information uh, that's available to me in terms of uh, a video uh, that I was half tempted to, to basically just plagiarize and play it over here. Um, but you can actually go out there and, uh, and view all the functionality that you can, uh, you can deploy. It gives you some of the features in detail, so screenshots of some of those, uh, those details. It gives you how the data is shared. And down the bottom, it also gives you visibility of how much webinar is. So, uh, so essentially um, for, for, uh, for being able to, uh, to find and promote uh, go to webinar directly through, through HubSpot. Now, what I did is I did the integration into, into HubSpot and uh, and what I've got is um, an ability to uh, to uh, to go into um, into that um, uh, that marketplace and have a look at all my connected apps. 
So I've got a connected app, which is GoToWebinar already, right? So I've already downloaded that, I enabled it. It was very easy for me to enable that. Um, it recognized my um, my single sign-on into GoToWebinar straight away, and I was able to, uh, to, to jump that. If I have a look at the Go to Settings, um, it will show me what webinars I've got uh, that are taking place. And I've got one, uh, Go to Connect for the Partner, which is on the 15th of uh, June, um, which is synchronized with, um, uh, with, with Go to Webinar. I could actually synchronize all the events that are taking place. So I've got some uh, some future events and I've got some past events that, uh, that are uh, located in here. Now they're all sort of like sample webinars, et cetera, that, uh, that I've created in order to be able to show you something because otherwise it just becomes empty. But I've got an ability to, uh, to bring up webinars in here. Now, what does that mean? Well, firstly, um, uh, HubSpot has a really nice uh, landing page uh, system. So I can go in here and I can go into landing pages and I can build my own uh, landing page for, uh, for an event. So I've created one. So I've got a, a page that, uh, that I basically created. And if you uh, click on that, you'll find that this is what it looks like. Um, it basically says you don't want to miss this event. You know, I'm kind of like into, into the night sky. So, uh, so if I put in the details for, for this, um, 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 Bob Jane at um, gmail.com. I'm sure there's somebody like that that already exists. So I said, oh, look at that. It's smarter than that. And, uh, and I can submit that. Now that's going to go into my, uh, into my HubSpot. So I'll be able to, to go into uh, all my uh, metrics. So I've got uh, visibility of, uh, of people uh, that have actually uh, connected to that. And I'll also have that visibility into my GoToWebinar application. So if I go to my GoToWebinar applications, I'll have visibility of, uh, of the person that, that has registered on that scenario. The other thing that I can do is I can also look at lists. So now if I want to promote the solution, if I wanted to, to go out to, to others, what I can do is I can create um, a list in the system and those lists will be able to, uh, to basically create uh, different, uh, different opportunities. So I've got this list over here that I want to go out there and now I want to promote to those individuals, right? So, uh, so based on those leads, I can actually add some additional GoToWebinar filters. So one of those filters could be um, a GoToWebinar based filter. So if I select a GoToWebinar filter, and then some of the things that uh, that are that I'll have in the in the go to webinar is essentially things like has the contact um, attended, has the contact not attended, has the contact registered, or have they not registered? So directly through uh, through all the registered contacts that uh, that have come through to on on the website, I will be able to create a list and say, look, um, I don't want to go back to the people that have already registered because they're already registered, but I want to go out there and look for all my contacts and select the ones that have not yet registered and blast them again with a, with an email to uh, to uh, remind them that we're going to have a webinar coming up next uh, next week. So we've got this capability not only in HubSpot, we've got that capability in um, in other products such as Salesforce. In fact, we uh, with Salesforce we integrate with Marketo. So GoToWebinar has some great capabilities from an integration perspective. And today I really wanted to spend some time on that because it is a, a great um, uh, part of our GoToConnect portfolio. Now, the, the other thing that I wanted to, uh, to uh, show you today is, um, is also being able to, uh, to work with um, uh, a couple of different other APIs. So we do have this API that's available for core uh, developers. Uh, and we, uh, we make that available to, uh, to anybody that, um, that has uh, any desire to, uh, to, to run that. So those APIs are actually um, available through, um, through our website. It's developer.goto.com. And you've got some options in terms of go to connect, go to meeting, um, go to training, et cetera. So from that perspective, the other uh, developer can go out there and they can get a lot more capabilities that are uh, uh, baked into the system. So you can manage things like calls. So be able to, uh, to uh, initiate a call, be able to, uh, to receive and handle the call, be able to, uh, to look at real-time information 
in terms of what's going on in terms of my users be able to look at the reporting. So if somebody wants to have um, uh, information about you know, the, all the activities that took place, then we can provide uh, user activity information through um, uh, you know, like a, a format that, uh, that can be consumed by, uh, by users. And then once we've got that, we can also control the other um, uh, the activities uh, during the call. So if someone's on the call and they want to transfer, et cetera, uh, they've got some of those uh, activities into that. Some of the other things that might be of value is call recording. So if a customer wants to, uh, to utilize uh, a call recording system, for whatever reason, they can access those call recordings. So if you've got um, a third party that wants to uh, take those calls uh, and put them into part of their CRM system, then this is the interface that you utilize in order to capture all those uh, recordings and put it in and associate with, uh, with a call event. So if a call comes in, uh, not only do you have an event that's taken place, but you can also see uh, a call recording associated with, uh, with that particular uh, user. So that's really useful for uh, for companies or customers that want to or have an ability to do some development, or if you if you introduce me to a popular application provider in Australia that you find is really worthwhile to integrate. I will talk to them and I will introduce them to those APIs and I will have those conversations with you or you know on behalf of you and uh, and basically say look we can uh, we can have an integration into a specific vertical application that is now going to give us some enhanced and differentiated functionality in the marketplace so I welcome you to uh, to engage with me around uh, various uh, uh, applications especially if they're local because we do have a marketplace of our own so we do have the um, uh, the go to connect uh, marketplace and there's a you know a lot of uh, different um, uh, things that are currently available in the um, in the systems to uh, to integrate with but I want something unique I want something that uh, nobody else has so if we can then work with um, you know some something like a, you know equivalent to a curved dental but in Australia that would be really wonderful so that we can go out there to all, all the dentists and, uh, and talk to them if we then have a conversation with people that are specifically looking at um, you know the um, you know, uh, a legal industry, and we're actually doing quite a bit of work around that currently. Anyway, um, then we can know we can have those conversations with those um, uh, with those developers. So there's quite a few that uh, that we have which we've already pre-baked, but I'm keen to actually use and take advantage of those APIs to grow that even further. Now, the last item that I wanted to cover off in terms of integration is around the dial plans. As you all know, we have this um, dial plan uh, editor. And in the dial plan editor, we have a number of things that we can use and we use them on a regular basis. There's probably a few that we probably don't know too much about. One of them is the CRM integration. So post a call to a CRM. That's actually something that, uh, that works with Zoho in particular. So if you've got a customer that's using Zoho, one of the things that we can do is when a call comes in, uh, we can basically route them to this uh, CRM integration part. And basically what it will do, it will dynamically route to the caller based upon the lookup in Zoho. So for example, um, our call comes in from a particular extension and we know that it's associated with an account manager that, uh, that looks after that particular site then we can map that from a Zoho perspective and then we'll go to the right individual. So, so based on the caller ID, we use Zoho to, or to send it directly to, or to the right person. So that could be useful. Um, the other one that, uh, that, that's out there is this um, HTTP notify. So let's just take the scenario that I've got um, a, a, a a queue that, uh, that I'm sending information to. So, uh, so I've got a call, it's going to, uh, to a particular queue. And, um, and after the call's gone to a queue, after 60 seconds of timeout, I might actually want to do a HTTP notify. So I want to you know, create an event, do something, you know, send an email, slap somebody in the face, you know, whatever, in order to notify somebody that that call has timed out. And, um, and then we can write, or you, know, you could basically write uh, like a post message to a server, that server basically says, aha, 
someone's gone through or through this uh, request. Um, what do you want me to do about it? I want to slap somebody in the face to, or to alert them, you know, that type of a thing. So, uh, so you can basically create middleware that will act on this event um, and uh, and carry on. So after that, we can obviously do other things. You can uh, you can send it to uh, to you know uh, to another caller. So if I wanted to uh, to send it to a simple dial, not a problem. So it basically notifies and moves along. So that's kind of like HTTP notify that uh, that that is like an alerting function. The next level of, uh, of uh, alerting function could be uh, doing a bit of a remote call control. So the difference between uh, HTTP notify and remote call control is the fact that in here, I send out a request to the server, not just to alert, but also to listen for a response. So if I get a response, and that response is basically to say, route it to, uh, to a specific extension, then it's going to route to that specific extension. So, uh, so it basically has an ability to, to receive as well as post. So, uh, so the first one is going to be just an alert, uh, and we'll get uh, get some notification. And it's a one-way um, track. This remote call control is basically sending out a post and then waiting for a get to to receive the other uh, instruction as to what to go to next. Now. When I first looked at that, I thought, wow, this is uh, this is really great and powerful. And uh, and I thought to myself, well, why is it that I don't have a lot of information about it? So I actually looked for it and there's some good info. So we do have, um, if you go into our go to connect support website, you will find that if you do a search on dial plan nodes, one of those would be what are the different dial plan nodes? And in there, you will find that you've got an answer for a lot of those weird things. So for example, CRM integration says dynamically route a call to the contact owner by matching the caller ID with the phone number found in Soho CRM. Uh, if we have a look down uh, HTTP notify, it basically says, okay, when, uh, when you uh, hit that event, what you can do is you can post either a caller ID or the dialed number or the name um, to, uh, to a specific server. And then it will uh, it will launch it. So it could actually be multiples of it. It doesn't have to be just one. It could be basically caller ID as well as the PBX ID. For example, if you if you're uh, an MSP and you're providing a lot of services and you want to know which customer it came from because um, uh, you know it's a service that you're b building onto that, great. You will have that information um, uh, visible to you. Um, the other one is um, a remote call control and now this is basically taking that uh, remote control once again looking at the caller ID, the dialed number, uh, the PBX ID and then sending that message and then waiting for a couple of minutes for a response. So, uh, so we're expecting a response back from the same um, server to find out what to, what to do next. Yeah. So, uh, so that's kind of like the uh, the description of that. And there's some good examples of, uh, of where this might be applicable. So uh, if, uh, if you've got any customers looking at that, it's a really nice place to get yourself familiar with some of those, um, uh, some of those uh, questions. Cool. So that's essentially what I wanted to cover off from an integrations perspective today. I think uh, what I'd like to do is uh, to give everyone an opportunity to ask some questions. So um, I think what I'll do is I'll hand it over to uh, to Jessica and see if we have had any questions come through. <laughs> uh, we, do have a, we do have a couple of questions in here, which is great. So keep them coming. Um, the first one uh, is, is more of a comment, but um, when you were speaking of the integration, so someone's commented to try to integrate with Tune for uh, automotive support. Um, but some of the questions, so the first one's uh, on the demo incentive. Um, so what is the process for organizing a uh, training session for a demo? Okay, so the best way to do it is to speak to uh, to your channel manager, and um, and they uh, and they will work out uh, you know the plan. Uh, basically, it will involve uh, Deepak and or myself uh, in order to uh, to run with a training session, and we will uh, will provide that. But it's not just a training session; it also requires uh, for a demo system to be um, acquired. So um, so typically in the demo system, we provide uh, two extensions. And uh, and one number to to dial in. So at least you can uh, provide like you know a call, uh, you know transfer a call, um, and you can show the soft phone. You can show um, you know associate a handset with that if that's uh, what you want to do. Um, all all of that is uh, it is available to you. Right. And um, how can partners validate that demos took place to claim the reward? 
Uh, okay, so that, that's a, that's a tricky one, right? Because um, we want to make sure that uh, that you're doing the demos and you get recognized. So, in my opinion, the best way to do it is to uh, to actually um, uh, to do uh, a video of it. Um, so, if you have uh, go to meeting, uh, click on the video and um, and do that, and that would be great because we get to see um, you in action, and uh, we all like to uh, to be uh, you know uh, evaluating how our uh, partners are going and maybe assist in any way to see how. Um, uh, how we can help. Um, alternatively, you can also do um, uh, like a screen capture of, of your customer and um, and, and show how that's, uh, how that's going. So if you do that in GoToMeeting, that would be fantastic. And I think uh, Frank has uh, has uh, indicated that, uh, that that's kind of like the, the, the minimal that he would need to or to have. Ideally, a call recording. Um, if you're uh, if you're a little bit uh, self-conscious about sharing some of those uh, videos, then um, uh, then that will do. No, all good. Um, and maybe, and this question around the integration. So is there any additional cost um, associated with the integrations? Uh, not from our side. So, uh, so uh, there could be some additional costs um, for the, uh, for the, you know, application that uh, that is doing the integration so so that's possible mm -hmm. uh, but from our end we don't charge anything for that and that includes uh, the API um, uh, development so, so if you have uh, you know a requirement to develop from an API perspective uh, there is no charge for that uh, we don't charge for any of the uh, canned integrations that we uh, have already created um, and obviously anything in the DAO plan that's available to you is available to to you um, provided that you're uh, uh, not a basic user I think basic users uh, tend not yep. to have that uh, that access so if you're a standard um, and above then you're good to go Perfect. Thanks, Dabek. Um, that kind of concludes the, the questions. So if anyone has any final questions they'd like to ask our experts, go ahead. Um, and I'll let you guys just share any kind of final closing thoughts if you have anything you want to share with partners while we close out the session. Yeah, just before we do that, I actually wanted to, to follow up on that automotive uh, one. That was a yeah. comment uh, at the beginning. Um, I wasn't quite sure uh, I understood that uh, entirely. Um, can you just repeat that one? Oh, it was just more of a, a comment around uh, doing an integration with Australia's uh, largest automotive CRM, which is Tune. It was from a partner. A oh, right, Tune. Okay. Well, it's great to great to know that one. Um, so we we have done uh, some work with Cox Automotive, uh, which was uh, quite popular, uh, and Vin Solutions, which uh, which is also another one. But I wasn't uh, aware of Tune. So what I'll do is I'll follow that one up and uh, and I'll take that as an action. So that's that's good feedback actually. Yeah, perfect. Um, someone just actually asked if we will share a recording of the session, and yes. So that'll go out in the follow up email, um, and we can share that as well. Uh, through your cool. channel managers. And just on that, we, we also uh, have, um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll digress a little bit and, and show you something that, uh, that we were starting to, to do. So, uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, is give you a visibility of all the, um, all the recordings that we have. So we've created a YouTube channel um, and that YouTube channel is um, not necessarily uh, space flight, sorry about all my my personal stuff, but we've got um, an APAC uh, somewhere up the top. I would have thought it would have been uh, APAC. Uh, go to connect, and uh, in that um, in that side here we go. Go to APAC, and over here is we're putting uh, a lot of the videos. So for example, I've got a Microsoft Teams uh, demo that uh, that we've created. We've also got a contact uh, overview, so uh, so the contact center overview. We've got some uh, some um, you know some previous uh, stuff that we've uh, pre recorded we've got something on last pass so uh, so we're going to uh, to add a lot of those um, uh, demos we'll just fine-tune them a little bit so that it uh, it looks a little bit more interesting um, and we'll uh, we'll put the um, uh, the Chrome extension uh, we'll provide the the webinar uh, integration into into uh, HubSpot we'll put the uh, the Salesforce we'll do the um, uh, the Soho and I'd like to uh, to get the Zendesk so uh, so those are the things that we'd like to add to that so uh, Search for go to APAC, subscribe, like the whole thing, and then have a, uh, access to those views. And you, the good thing about that is you can share those with both the customers. So, uh, so they're all customer-facing videos. Perfect. We'll make sure that link gets sent out as well. 
um, to everyone on the call and to our partners as well. That's a great resource. Thanks, Dalbeck. Cool. Um, perfect. So before we close out the session, any any final thoughts, comments you wanted to share um, with the partners? Deepak? Yep. So please reach out if you are looking for any integration or need any in-depth information about the integration which we have shown today. Please reach out and we'll be happy to share those things. Yeah, and uh, from my perspective, um, look, it's uh, it is end of financial year. Uh, let's go out there. Let's try and uh, capitalize on some of those uh, those programs that we have currently in play. Uh, we'd love to uh, to part with some of those dollars and uh, and give them to uh, to our partners that uh, that bring us those opportunities and elevate those towards uh, you know towards a sale. Um, I'm looking forward to some of the activity. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you everyone um, for joining the session today. We appreciate your time and we hope you found this valuable and we will see you at the next office hour session. So thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Goodbye. All the best. Thank you everyone.